So Julian, the, the clear bias by people in the DNC against Bernie Sanders is probably what got the most attention here in the United States. I'm wondering, in the documents that you released, what stood out to you as the most significant thing? Well, to, to me, the most significant is a clear instruction by the Director of Communications, Louis Miranda, to his staff uh, to uh, undercover, uh, quote, without attribution, unquote, uh, push out a story through the media that Bernie Sanders supporters were engaged in acts of violence. Uh, I, that is not merely a sort of internal rhetoric complaining about Bernie Sanders. Oh, actually, we prefer Hillary. Everyone has their personal preferences in a workplace environment. Those, those can be expressed. This was an instruction through the chain of command at the DNC to covertly manipulate the public in order to preference one particular candidate of another. In, in terms of the, the timing of the release of these, um, how much of this on, on the part of WikiLeaks was, I mean, clearly you timed it to the start of the DNC. Was that for maximum impact, for maximum, you know, uh, sort of marketing? It, it was for, that's when we viewed that there would be the maximum interest uh, by readers, but also we have a responsibility to, you know, if we, if we publish after, uh, you can just imagine uh, how outraged uh, the uh, Democratic uh, voting uh, population would have been. So it had to have been before. There's quite a lot of work, as you can imagine, to uh, verify uh, such material and to organize it, index it, catalog it, put it into a searchable, customized database, etc. I saw an interview where you said you had, quote, a lot more material uh, that you might release pertaining to the U U.S. election. Are you referring to more emails from the DNC? Because I talked to Donna Brazil, who, as you know, has now replaced Desi Wa Debbie Wasserman Schultz in the wake of this, who says that the hack went on for more than uh, a year, they believe, and that there very well may be a lot more things out there. We have more material related to the Hillary Clinton uh, campaign. It is correct. To say that, of course, you have to be very precise uh, in, in reporting my statements, which are always very precise. Um, and yeah, those are e extremely interesting. Uh, and we will see what will come of them in due course. There is word today uh, of, of a new FBI investigation into uh, an alleged cyber hack of the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee server, which is said to be similar to the hack of, of the DNC committee uh, or the Democratic National Committee. Do you have any knowledge of this latest hack, or if you do, any intention to publish any information obtained from it? I can't comment on anything that might reflect on sourcing, either to rule things in uh, or to rule things out. But I will just say, and this is public information, it's not coming from me privately, uh, that there has been um, multiple hacks of the DNC over the last two years. Uh, the DNC and the RNC uh, uh, Swiss cheese, have been Swiss cheese uh, in terms of their security. And the DNC has been notified um, quite some time ago uh, that that is the case. Uh, and it has legal responsibilities uh, that it must carry out to notify its donors if it is aware uh, that um, their confidentiality has been breached by a hack. Now, the emails that we publish are a separate question to the various hacks that have occurred uh, to the DNC. We have not connected those emails to a hack of the DNC and no one else has uh, connected them. There's other documents that are published by uh, the Hill, uh, the Spoken Gun and Gorka that have been uh, connected to the hack. I, I, I'm not even gonna bother to ask you about your sources because obviously you're not gonna reveal your sources, you don't do that. Um, but US officials ha have said that they have, and I'm quoting, little doubt was the term, uh, that Russian hackers were, were behind this. They haven't said it definitively. Do you know, um, again, I'm not asking you who did it, but do you know who did the hacking of the DNC uh, server that got you the information? Do you know who provided you with these emails? We just, as a matter of policy, we don't go anywhere near commenting on sources, ruling things in, ruling things out, because it provides extra information that might be used to track down a source. Uh, but I can say that yesterday, um, James Clapper, uh, the head of the DNI, the um, Director of National Intelligence that oversees all 16 uh, U.S. intelligence agencies, uh, stated 
that there was a lot of media hyperventilation uh, and, quote, they didn't know enough uh, to ascribe motivation regardless of who it might have been. So, I mean, those kinds of statements are, are coming out of the um, man responsible for overseeing all uh, U.S. intelligence agencies. If, um, obviously, there's been a lot of focus on, on Russia, where is it Russian hackers with connection to the, to the Russian government? If, in fact, it was hackers with connection to the Russian government, that this was a, a state-sponsored act, would that concern you at all, it, given the fact the Russian government has, you know, been accused of killing journalists, uh, you know, repressing, repressing journalism and, and a, a whole host of other things? It, would, would, it be, would it concern you that, that WikiLeaks is, is, is doing something which, whether you know it or not, is, is serving a state interest? Well, I mean, the, the U.S. famously hacks uh, um, organizations all around the world, in, including Amnesty International, Greenpeace, etc. Uh, the Russian government, the Chinese government, do they do that as well? Of course they do. Uh, now, if there's a transition uh, between uh, collecting intelligence and using, using intelligence, what kind of transition is it? Uh, well, the allegation uh, is, in this case, the transition is to making truthful information available to the public. Uh, and if uh, U.S. intelligence agencies want to give us truthful information, we will verify it. It will take time. They should waste our time. Uh, but we'd be very happy to also reveal information about the Russian government uh, to the public. I want to get your reaction to something that Edward Snowden tweeted yesterday. He said, democratizing information has never been more vital and WikiLeaks has helped, but their hostility to even modest curation is a mistake. How do you respond to that idea? I mean, you and I, I think, have discussed this before with, with prior leaks, the idea that you publish personal information, in this case, social security numbers, credit card numbers of people associated with the Democratic Party or a, or a voicemail between somebody from the DNC and, uh, you know, their kid going to a zoo. We're not, we're not talking about personal information. We're talking about information held by the ruling political party uh, of the United States and its cash flows. Uh, so that's very important for investigative journalism. Now, the question is, should we um, tamper with the evidence in a pristine archive about the ruling party and its cash flows? Now, we have a lot of experience in this. Material that WikiLeaks has published has gone on uh, to result in the prosecutions uh, of many criminal acts as a result of the integrity of our archives, that they can be relied on to be pristine and not tampered with. Uh, and in this particular case, we have potentially illegal um, movements of money uh, that need to be tracked down and identified uh, and argued in court, either by prosecutors or by civil litigants, uh, that the perpetrators or the conspirators involved are properly identified. So you're saying that if you edited, that would somehow, that, that you believe that would hurt uh, the, the uh, I don't know, the security or the sanctity of the actual raw data? That's correct. And, we, and we've also found uh, problems in the past. We, we, do res we do occasionally restrict things in a time-limited manner where we perceive that uh, people are under serious threat of uh, retributive acts for a time-limited manner. But preserving the integrity of an archive so it can be used in legal process uh, is something that we've become very, very good at. Uh, and the CIA, as a result, has had judgments against them. Uh, the European Court of Human Rights, uh, Russia, uh, lost the UCOS case, $54 billion in the uh, arbitration course as a result of the integrity of the archives which was published. There's a report in the U.S. by Politico that says DNC staffers were told to not search WikiLeaks because malware is embedded in your site, which would allow WikiLeaks to search their computers. Is that true? Does WikiLeaks have the ability to search the computer of anyone using your site? No, no, and it's, it's quite uh, a fantastical claim. Uh, I guess it's necessary that DNC kills in order to, um, to discourage uh, uh, internal um, questioning of uh, its actions. Uh, but any sort of, you know, people get malware in their email all the time. So any kind of archive of email uh, has some malware in it, probably if it's big enough. Uh, is In this case, it's big enough. It's hard to say, but in cases where we've done 5 million emails from, from you know, private intelligence agencies, uh, there, has, there has been. But it is malware that is targeted at email readers, uh, not the form in which we display it on our website. 
There is a question whether you have a personal animus toward Hillary Clinton. You've criticized her on a number of national security, foreign policy issues. Obviously, she has obviously made statements against WikiLeaks. You gave an interview to the British network ITV back in June. You suggested that you're more concerned about Clinton, at least in terms of press freedom, th than Donald Trump. Do you, do you stand by that? Is this based on a personal no, animus? It, it, is, it is false reporting. You can go back and look at that ITV interview. Um, I never said... Uh, that I wanted to harm Hillary Clinton, anything like that. It was the presenter that used that word, and the New York Times has picked, picked its, you know, picked its candidate in this race, and so it distorts the facts in order to try and get its candidate up. Uh, WikiLeaks uh, has a guiding has um, foundational documents. Those foundational documents say that we accept materials of diplomatic, legal, ethical, or historical significance that haven't been published before and are un under some kind of censorship threat. Uh, this is a case that meets that. Back in 2009, we did the same thing to Republican Senator uh, Norm Coleman's campaign. So that's eight years of the same uh, same result. You mentioned earlier, uh, and I should have followed up on it, you mentioned that uh, the RNC, uh, their systems also are, are vulnerable. Um, have you seen information on the RNC? And, and would you publish it if you had it? Well, I, I'm making that statement because a number of security experts have made that statement, but also uh, because uh, a couple of months ago, uh, the DNI came out and said that there have been numerous attacks on both the RNC and the DNC with a range of motivations uh, from philosophical political opposition uh, by individuals to uh, espionage. So in the U.S., when the, the Clinton campaign comes out and says, well, look, we believe Russia is behind this, experts say this, or Jake Tapper pressed them for examples of experts, they, they didn't actually name any, uh, but, you know, there is this sort of drumbeat of belief that Russia is behind this and their investigation is obviously ongoing. Do you think that is just, what, what does that say to you, that they're blaming Russia? I mean, it's... <laughs> It's great material. It's, it's a great scoop that many journalists are going through and you know, producing great investigative results. Uh, obviously, there's a need to try and uh, distract from the seriousness of that. Uh, there's been protests and walkouts at the, at the DNC uh, because of what's happened. Debbie Weissman Schultz has resigned. As a report earlier today in Politico that all the senior staff of the DNC, DNC uh, feel that they're going to be fired uh, as a result. So, of course, people are desperate uh, to latch onto anything to create a diversion. But it doesn't matter in WikiLeaks case. Our methodology means that we verify the material that we publish. Sourcing is another question. Our publications are disconnected uh, from the source because we're not writing up someone's opinion. Uh, we are providing uh, pristine material, analyzed, uh, indexed, uh, with our own descriptive but entirely verifiable uh, analysis as the result. So it is a diversion. It is a meta story. It's a an interesting meta story. Every, every claim in the press should be checked out, uh, but it is a meta story. And, and to those in, you know, I mean, right now, obviously, you're hold up. You're at the still at the the Ecuadorian embassy in London. You've been there, I think, now for four years, uh, avoiding extradition to, to Sweden, possibly even the, the United States. To Americans watching right now who agree with the U.S. government or who are angry that you published uh, this information right before the uh, the, the Democratic National Convention. Um, what is your argument? What do you say to them? That, that they feel you're interfering in the U.S. election? No, I think that I think that is a I think that is a fair question. WikiLeaks is an organization that has a lot of people in it. It's a publisher that's been going a long time. We are entirely funded by the public, by our readers. Uh, unlike you know a billionaire-funded foundations or Rockefeller or um, organizations funded by USAID or organizations like Russia Today. We are funded by the public. We have a number of Americans uh, that work uh, for our organization. So, you know, most of our readers and uh, most of our donors are in, uh, in the public uh, in the United States. So we have a connection to the United States. Personally, do I have a connection to the United States? Yes, of course, because as an Australian, Australia is in, you know, uh, in the U.S. alliance in a very significant manner. Uh, but Australians don't get a chance to vote. So, uh, well, but, so to the question of, of anger that, that you're interfering in the U.S. election, you say this is what your, that your readers are American and therefore it's okay? Well, it's, it's, what our re it's what our readers demand, but it's also our basic principles that the publication of true information 
uh, and thus important qualifier, true information about modern human institutions allows us to understand what they're doing and therefore to reform them. Uh, if we don't understand what our institution is doing, we have no hope to reform them whatsoever. Uh, Julian Zanz, uh, I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you, Anderson.